So with that said, let me introduce our presenters today. You'll hear from Mike Withka, who oversees the Lean Enterprise Program for the Manufacturers Resource Center, which is based out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, here in the United States. You'll also hear from Oscar Roche, who is a little further away. Oscar is director of the TWI Institute Australia and Visual Workplace Australasia. I might also mention uh, that if you'd like to meet Oscar in person, he is one of the regular contributors to the annual Kata Summit and the TWI Summit, which takes place February 18th through the 22nd in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, and stay tuned because after our session, I'm going to tell you about a discount that we're offering for those that are watching the webinar, webinar today. So please hang around for that. So for now, Oscar, I'm going to go ahead and hand things over to you. Good. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you very much. So welcome, everybody, and thank you for putting aside um, uh, half an hour on your afternoon or morning if you're this side of the world. Um, Mike and I very much appreciate you giving us um, your time. So it was interesting and compelling for me, uh, middle of this year, to see something on, I guess, the other side of the world that I'd been seeing here in Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia for a little while. So in this short webinar, Mike and I are going to discuss, I guess, what you'd call a hypothesis that Toyota Carter and the improvement Carter in particular um, does function as a pool system for skills and learning. So uh, the format for this what will be about half an hour or the the agenda if you like is a quick intro from me and a bit of background on how this came about <clears throat> there'll be three four or five slides of that then mike will present his case study and then there'll be a summary from me at the end so as, again thank you and we trust you enjoy and learn from what you're about to hear so let's first couple of, summarize a couple of things or overview a couple of things and the first is a pool system We'll cover on this slide and what's meant by that. I'm sure most of you would be probably aware of it, but we'll just be clear. And the second is the improvement Carter pattern, and that will appear on the next slide, and I'll briefly overview that. So firstly, pool systems. Um, certainly from manufacturing, anyone who's implementing or working with Lean probably is pretty familiar with this. Uh, in terms of materials, the, what we don't want is a, is a push system where materials, as you can see top left, their stockpile regard in a particular place may not even be where they're wanted um, uh, it, when they're not needed by whoever might be going to use them down the track and the result is as per that diagram uh, as you see a stockpile there. Underneath a pool system is where materials are delivered to the point of need when they're needed in the minimum uh, order quantity for the person who needs them. That's for materials but the same can be said for um, discussions or meetings and I uh, see this a lot and I'm guilty of it myself in conducting meetings and also I see it in um, the, your stand-up meetings, your daily stand-ups or your toolbox talks or whatever you guys might call them. <clears throat> so a push meeting is where the agenda seems to be being pushed by uh, those in charge down to the people who are attending and generally you can see when that's happening because of the, the, the disengagement um, that appears on people's faces. Alternatively, a pool meeting or a pool discussion is where those in attendance are pulling information from the system or the agenda, what they need, when they need, uh, in order to do their job. So pool systems intend to deliver, the intent of a pool system is to deliver what's needed, when needed, where needed, to who needs it, regardless of whether it's uh, material or information. So the four steps of the improvement Carter, um, our hypothesis in essence is that there are a pool system. And just quickly, this diagram we're using comes from the Toyota Carter practice guide. Um, and thanks to Mike Rother for his work in that area. And um, on what a lot of this stuff is based. So what we're proposing is that a, an the improvement Carter pulls skills and delivers learning when needed. And that's what Mike will illustrate in his, um, in his discussion coming shortly. Just a bit of overview on the improvement Carter. The improvement Carter, uh, I'm going to assume, uh, based on the rapidness of this overview, that most of you are familiar with it. The improvement Carter is a practical way to apply scientific thinking. 
So the first step of the improvement carter is to get the direction or challenge. The equivalent in professional science or scientific thinking is our topic area, the aim of or the aim of our effort. So in professional science, we um, the direction or challenge is our topic area, the aim of the effort. Second step of the improvement carter is to grasp the current condition. In professional science, that's gathering facts and data that are available to us now. The third step of the improvement carter is the yellow one in the middle is establish a next target condition. And by the way, always has a by when date as such. The equivalent in professional science is our research objective uh, or our hypothesis, which is the section we're looking at, if you like, which is part of the total topic area. Now, before we go to the fourth step in the improvement carter, as soon as we establish our next target condition, we consider what obstacles are stopping us getting there, uh, achieving that target condition now, and then we pick one to experiment on. In professional science, it's very similar. It's saying what's missing in our hypothesis, or our research objective, what are the obstacles to our understanding? The fourth step of the improvement carter is conduct experiments to get there, and there being our next target condition. The equivalent in professional science is the experiment, very similar, based on a plan, do, check, adjust pattern. Exactly the same pattern that's used in the fourth step of the improvement carter when we conduct our experiments. This is the most important bit of the improvement carter. It creates our momentum to where we want to be. There is more detail on this um, than what I've just discussed. Um, it's available uh, in this um, simple table that Mike Rother, Michael Lombard and myself put together in September. Quick overview, a means to an end, what lean was in the 80s and 90s, um, and then uh, which is essentially about waste reduction, and then lean with a Toyota Carter mindset, which is essentially about striving for achieving target conditions and the byproduct is waste reduction. The middle column is the improvement carter overview, and in the blue we can see here um, is examples of the application of the improvement carter. That's actually um, based on work that um, we're doing here with intensive chicken farming. This, this example was seen about three or four months ago. We're doing this work with a group of assistant managers. And then there's professional science over here on the right-hand side. <clears throat> So if you want more detail on that, there's a website address that if you go to that web address, you can actually download that PDF. But let's, before we move on to Mike, let's have a look at what the experiment pattern that occurs here at four, the fourth step of the improvement card actually looks like. It's PDCA based, as I said, just the same as professional science. And the, uh, it follows an, what we call an experiment record pattern, where the first step is plan, where we say, what's our next step in addressing the obstacle? And still part of plan, what's our prediction? What do we think is going to happen? What do we expect to happen? Then we do it, whatever we plan, we do. Then our check follows, PDCA, remember, during or after our step, what did we see or hear? And then what did we learn from that? And then our adjust plan, and remember, PDCA is a cycle, it's not four steps, it's a cyclical, uh, it's a cyclical um, pattern that involves four stages is the best way of looking at it. So adjust does merge into plan. So in the second row, we say, so therefore, based on what we've learned, what's our next step? Still part of plan, again, our prediction. And we have this crisscross pattern of a cross down across essentially happening throughout uh, the experiment pa experimentation pattern. And it's in the do section here that we actually require these knowledge and skills that are pulled in by the, by the improvement card and the experimenting pattern. Those knowledge and skills are required here to affect the plan. All right, just before we move into Mike's case study, um, let's uh, just a quick overview as to how we got to this point. So Mike attended the TWI Institute Toyota Carter 10 hour trainer, training um, program over two days. Uh, in December 2017. Then he continued to apply his uh, Toyota Carter skills. Then he attended the train the trainer with a group of maps in uh, a group of other maps in Allentown in July 2018, so five months ago. 
uh, on the Thursday or towards the getting towards the end of that train the trainer one of the requirements to certification is that you present a case study 15 to 20 minutes to illustrate the application of the Toyota Carter patterns so the, so what you're about to see now is essentially the the case study that Mike presented to the group back in July and um, I, I saw immediate relevance to what I've been seeing and very much appreciated the, the work that Mike had been doing and sharing it with us. So I'll now hand over to Mike and he will um, go over what he presented back in July. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Oscar. Uh, hello to everybody and thank you for your interest in this uh, webinar. The case study that I'm going to go through right now begins with two slides regarding the background in a company to give you some idea as to what their motivation was. Uh, and then we'll move into a description of the um, kata practice uh, that they had gone through as a team. So this is a case study about a medium-sized cleaning chemical company who manufactures and distributes cleaning supplies to third-party uh, cleaning organizations that are involved in janitorial applications for institutions, i.e. somebody that would do some cleaning in an elementary school or in a college or a hospital. Uh, over the years, their business model has changed a bit. They used to be in a business where there was a lot of high volume manufacturer and now, uh, like many companies, seeing a need for making a variety of different products uh, in lower order quantities. And one of the things that they found themselves uh, doing in terms of being a niche business is to be very flexible in adding last minute additions to orders. So the effect of this new business model of low order quantities, high volume and last minute additions created a situation where there were a lot of line changeovers to be able to support that. Uh, complicating the matter was also the fact that they offered their customers a variety of container sizes. Um, so to kind of give you an idea as to what kind of operation they had, they would take chemicals, uh, they would come up with formulation work, they would do the batch manufacturing, in turn filling it in a proper container size. They would also make their own labels on site and pack them uh, into containers based on the customer requirements. Uh, one other note that's worth mentioning is that there was a good deal of temporary workforce on all three shifts of this operation. Next slide, Oscar. So the challenge or the, the, the big problem that they had for improvement in this company was that they were experiencing delays shipping to their customers, uh, primarily due to labels that were going on bottles and cases. And from just talking through people on the Gemba, uh, it was recorded that the label rework was due to labels that were missing in production or labels that were available but had printing defects on them or labels that were there um, were defect free but in some form or fashion were damaged. Although the company didn't track this as a metric, they approximated the um, additional cost of about $60,000 due to scrapping and reworking labels annually. Uh, that's a conservative number. Some folks argued that it may have been as high as $70,000, $75,000. A lot of money for a little label. Um, the executive team got together and found that there was two sources of scrap uh, labels, uh, one being the press room, an on-site room where they actually manufacture the labels and also the filling operation, the consumer of the labels uh, in production where they're filling bottles on six different production lines and three shifts. And uh, so this kind of gives you the background for the case study. Next slide, Oscar. So what you see here is a picture of the one of the um, storyboards that the team put together for this project. There were actually two teams. Uh, one team was working on a storyboard for the press room addressing label issues that were happening during the printing process. The team that uh, worked on the storyboard that you see on your screen now was a production team that focused on label losses in production. So the storyboard, if you're familiar with it, um, is fairly standard here. The process is identified up top as the bottle filling and case packing. 
The challenge that the executive team put in front of this team was to fill bottles in production and pack the associated cases of filled bottles with zero label defects and zero application errors by June of 2018. So the team got together and started working on this storyboard. And one of the first things that they found was that they lacked sufficient data to articulate the current condition. So after a series of misfires and probably about two or three weeks of trying very, very hard, they finally came up with a manual system of tracking labels as they are leaving the press room and working their way through production. If you look in the center column under current condition, uh, you can see two, two weeks worth of data in December of 2017 that the team had collected. In two weeks of collecting data, the team found that in production, there were four possible ways to waste a label and that the breakdown for the occurrences of wasting labels are indicated up top. Threading waste, uh, the act of taking a label from a roll and inserting in the machine, uh, caused 727 label defects. Application issues, meaning the machine was loaded uh, and was in the process of applying a label, was causing 322 label defects. There are no instances of somebody putting a case label on incorrectly, and there were eight uh, instances in two weeks of a case label being damaged. So the team looked at the current condition and started thinking about areas that they would like to work on, and they identified that threading waste was probably the opportunity that they would like to work on first. So they established a target condition to fill bottles and pack cases with no more than 75 wasted labels due to threading. And that was a target that they were trying to hit in a week's period of time. And they gave themselves until January of 2018 to do it. What they wanted to do is to make sure that these, this, the data collected this time period was over a similar production period with the same levels. Uh, and they also recognized that threading was a uh, technique that was probably not fully understood given all the temporary labor that was part of their workforce. The team um, listed in the bottom right-hand corner uh, a bunch of obstacles that they believe that was getting between them and the target condition. And if you look at the list, which is kind of hard to read, you see uh, items like various methods of label storage, varying level of operator skill, various threading methods, and so on down the list. After contemplating it, the team uh, wanted to tackle the obstacle of various threading methods uh, as a way to move the current condition to the target condition. Now in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a PDCA cycles record that shows the experimentation record that this team went through to move the current condition to the target condition. Oscar, can you zoom in on that for me? So, what you see here is a, uh, is a zoom up of what was on that form. The team decided to create a single threading method as the experiment, the hypothesis that they believed needed to be challenged to see if they could make the current condition the target condition. Their expectation was that all shifts would use, use this new method and that they would be able to zero out the label waste, which was somewhere around 700 or so uh, label wasted. After running the experiment, they found that one production line on one shift actually used the new method. But the good news was, was that it produced zero waste. So the team had learned a couple of things in this simple experiment. One, that there was a good feeling, a good outlook on this new method, but also that the supervision or the team responsible for taking this new method um, wasn't necessarily uh, supporting it uh, for it to be sustained. So uh, the next experiment the team decided to do was to create a training plan for the new method. And what they expected that if they were to go through this training plan and train all the operators, that all shifts would use the new method and that all shifts would be benefiting from it and producing zero label waste. But what they found after going through this training program over a series of days, that there was zero waste of labels on first shift, 
largely because the first shift supervisor was on the team. Uh, however, second and third shift uh, were not using the method and was essentially still creating label waste. So they had learned from this experiment that the new method worked when the training was provided, but also as, as the training was supported. The team then decided that they needed to take a step back and train the second and the third shift operators in a new method. And the thinking here was that second and third shifts would eventually arrive at zero defects in labels uh, if the, their supervisors supported it. The actual was in the time period they collected the data, not only were they able to sustain the improvement on first shift with zero waste in labels, they were also able to accomplish that at second and third shift. So the training program uh, with the supervisors created an environment where this new method was sustained, and that's what was in the third uh, experiment. Next slide, Oscar. So some reflection on the case study. Um, a couple of things that I personally had learned about um, that was sort of tangential to the case study was beware of program scope. We actually started off with two separate um, improvements, one that was designed to attack waste in the press room, one that was designed to attack waste in production. And we found out that that was probably too much activity for the company to support at one time. Secondly, do not assume that uh, if you decide today I'm going to go out and articulate my current condition, that somehow, some way, the data to be able to describe that is going to magically appear at your fingertips. It actually took a long time, two to three weeks, for this team to figure out exactly how to describe their current condition with respect to those wasted labels. And the third point, which gets back to what Oscar was presenting before, is to recognize your obstacle. Uh, when this improvement activity, as the team began to practice kata, um, they found that first shift needed an improvement method in order to get to zero uh, wasted labels. However, as this method began to get used, they began to find that the problem somewhat shifted. That second shift didn't necessarily need a method improvement, that rather second and third shift needed a people improvement. They needed a way to be able to take a tested, improved method and to use it within the culture on second and third shift. Next slide, Oscar. That's it. Thanks, Mike. Um, so I think what you've probably heard through that, what I really appreciated back in, in July when Mike presented it, is I've got a little sign here on my office wall that says, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And as Mike has just done then, he did a very good, uh, did a brilliant job in explaining um, not a complex situation, but in simple terms and was able to help the group um, understand the application of the improvement Carta and how it um, becomes a, a pool system. But more importantly, uh, in most situations, there's going to be uh, a couple of categories of obstacles, if you like one of them being method and the, the second one that's nearly always there in some form or another is the, the people aspect because people need to, um, just a new method alone doesn't change things. Um, people need to adopt it and embrace and so on and so forth. But just one point I picked up then, which, which, which Mike said, and maybe I didn't pick it up back in July, was that second bullet point here where he says, be where he spoke about being prepared to create data collection system. In other words, putting really strong emphasis on um, understanding your, or grasping that current condition. I think that's something I, I know I'm guilty of, and I think it's generally something we don't do well in the Western world. And it goes back to, again, I think it's that Einstein quote about um, taking 55 minutes to understand a problem, if you had to solve all the problems in the world, taking 55 minutes to understand the situation um, before, and five minutes on the actual doing. And that was really well illustrated there, Mike. So thank you. All right, just a bit of a summary then. So we discussed earlier that um, a pool system delivers what's needed when it's needed. Um, and we've had that illustrated through Mike's example just now, the last 10 minutes. 
So what in the application of the improvement Carter pattern, what creates the pull, if you like, is the target condition. So the target condition is pulling us to where it, where we need to be. And, and it's interesting really, because that the target condition itself is pulled from the current condition in the direction of the challenge or um, in the direction of our challenge. So we've really got multiple pulled systems happening here, which when I sort of realized that three or four years ago or first recognized that, uh, I thought, well, that makes sense. If, if lean and the application of lean is, is one of the fundamentals is about pull and the improvement Carter pattern is a pull system itself, it sort of makes sense that the two go together and that they logically fit and one and one starts to make three. So, or more. So we've got the target condition creating the pull, if you like, um, and the pull, it's pulling the experiments, which in turn removes the obstacles. So the target condition creates the pull. It's the pull to do experiments and the experiments remove the obstacles. And we saw that really effectively in what Mike's just illustrated to us. Uh, and again, what I enjoyed about Mike's presentation was, um, and Mike's actual work, was that it, it identified some common obstacle groups that, that I've been seeing probably since recognising, seeing them for a long time, not recognising them, recognising them from about two years up till, ago up till now. The first is the obstacle group of hard to do. Um, and that was a uh, the first obstacle that Mike's group had to address. The countermeasure to that is method improvement or in our TWI world, we call that job methods. The second obstacle group that's very, very common is the don't know how, can't do obstacle group. And the countermeasure to that is training skills or in our world, job instruction. And the third and probably the most hidden, but the strongest obstacle we often find in, in achieving target conditions is the, the people aspect, which is uh, the obstacle of won't do or didn't do. And it's there that the leading skills or leadership skills come to the fore. And in our world, uh, that's the job relations thinking. And it also stands to reason that the skill of leading really encompasses all of the improvement carter because the improvement carter is a people pattern. It's, it's a pattern that, that in the end of the day, processes don't improve themselves, not yet, as far as I'm aware. The improvements are done by people. So the improvement carter is a people pattern. So the, it's not surprising to see, for us to see that the skill of leading encompasses all of the improvement carter, not just um, down where experiments are occurring. This was encapsulated brilliantly by uh, Dave, ha Dave Hyam, who's a Boeing site director. Uh, in some work we were doing in May the 30th, I think it was this year, he said as part of his presentation, I loved it, was if people on your team don't trust your intent, it'll be very difficult to make progress. So the, improvement, the intent of the improvement Carter is, pattern is to help you make progress by thinking that way, uh, but it's not gonna happen if people don't trust your intent. So the combination of the improvement Carter and the skill of leading helps build trust and allows you to uh, head in the direction of your intent. So a quick summary, um, what we've illustrated, uh, or what Mike illustrated, is that the improvement Carter pulls skills and delivers learning. We had, Mike illustrated three of those obstacle categories, the hard to do, the don't know how, can't do, which was the training countermeasure, and the won't do, didn't do, which is leadership countermeasure. And, and remember the training is a form of um, leadership anyway. And he illustrated that through um, taking us in detail through the actual experiment record. As Dwayne said at the start, um, we're not fielding questions here, but there's uh, both Mike's email address um, and my email address. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to email us at any stage and um, we'll respond um, uh, yeah. straight away. So we really appreciate your interest and Thank you very much for uh, attending this webinar. Well, uh, Oscar uh, and Mike, thanks thanks so much, guys. Uh, thanks for not only your contributions to CADA and TWI, but thanks for this uh, kind of this emerging fusion of both of those together. You brilliantly demonstrated uh, why there's a community of people that are really embracing both TWI and CADA together. And Oscar, you know this, uh, but even to the point where in Europe we launched uh, the TWI and CADA Summit 
Uh, so if those of you, if our friends on here are uh, from Europe, uh, you can look for information on the TBI and Kata Summit Europe. So again, thanks guys. As mentioned earlier, we will be holding uh, two separate events uh, during the same week and in the same city that I have up here on the screen. The Kata Summit takes place February 18th and 19th in Savannah, Georgia, beautiful Savannah, Georgia. The TWI Summit takes place just a couple of days later on the 21st and 22nd. To learn more about those two summits, you can visit leanfrontiers.com slash skillsweek, and you'll find jumping off points to each of those particular events. We're excited uh, to announce that Gimba Academy will be with us in Savannah this year uh, with Ron Pereira, as a matter of fact, who will be hosting his famed podcast actually right on site. So as, as you're walking by their uh, display table, you can watch Ron as he's interviewing some of the Kata geeks and TWI geeks that happen to be gathered with us. As a sponsor, Gimba Academy is offering today's webinar participants a 10% discount off the standard summit fee. So as you see there on the screen, if you register using LF10 as the discount code, you'll receive that 10% discount. And I'll include those details in a follow-up email that you'll get tomorrow, along with a link to the recordings. So please do join us in Savannah. These are two of my favorite events, one of my favorite cities, but certainly two of my favorite events that we run, which will provide ample opportunity to learn, network, and practice these skills that I think, as Oscar and Mike have shown here, are foundational to any continuous improvement effort. So thanks again, Oscar, Mike, and thanks for, no take, for everyone taking the time to join us in today's session. We'll see you in Savannah. Thank you.